We'd like to be able to take the general form of the equation for a conic section and convert it into the standard form for the particular conic section we're interested in, in this case for circles. Um, but the same could be true for a parabola or a hyperbola or an ellipse. Um, and uh, oh, one of the things that uh, I said in a previous video is that this bxy term, we're, we're not going to worry about that for Algebra 2 class. Um, we're, that, that, that is only for parabolas and ellipses and hyperbolas that are <clears throat> uh, on the Cartesian plane uh, oriented at a diagonal. We're, we only worry about things that are straight up and and straight up and down or sideways. And uh, with circles, we really don't care. They, the circles, there, there really is no such thing as a diagonal circle or a straight up and down or a sideways circle. Anyways, um, in this particular case, I have an example equation here that looks like the general form up here. You'll notice our a value is one, our, y, our c value is one, uh, our d value is six, and our e value is negative eight, and our f value is five. Now what we'd like to do is put this into the, the uh, standard form for the equation of a circle. And the way we're going to do that, completing the square. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Um, first of all, let's put all the x's together. So x squared plus 6x plus, we'll leave room for a little something extra. And then plus y squared minus 8y <clears throat> plus, leave room for a little something extra. Move this 5 over to the other side, make it a negative 5, and then add to the other side these two blanks. So in this case, we'd say blank there and blank there, and we just got to fill in those blanks. So um, in order to complete the square here, why don't you pause the video for a moment and see if you remember how to do it. Oh, that'd be so awesome. I'll get, we'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you remembered that we take this number 6 and we divide it by 2 and then we square that result and when we do we put that right up there. So this turns out this will be a 9 and then we do the same thing here. We divide this 8 by 2 <clears throat> and if you want you can make a negative 8. Doesn't matter because we're about to square it and that gets us 8 divided by 2. 4 squared is 16 so we'll fill in the blanks here with 9 and 16. And we're just about done. This goes pretty quickly. x squared plus 6x plus 9 can be factored using um, the x factor method. Uh, or maybe you might even know how to do it. It'll, it'll just be, um, let me get rid of that. It'll be uh, x plus 3 squared. This guy right here is known as a perfect square trinomial um, because x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals it. All right, so then this guy over here is going to be y. Well, I'm going to let you figure it out. You pause the video for a second and see if you remember how to do it. I'll fix this up while I'm waiting for you. OK, go ahead and pause. All right, hopefully you remembered this will be y minus 4 squared, because y minus 4 times y minus 4 gets you those three guys right there. And then that is equal to all this stuff added up. Uh, this gets you 25 minus 5, that's 20. And that's pretty much it. That is the equation for a circle in uh, the standard form, the center radius form. Uh, that we talked about before. So that's pretty cool, huh? Not too bad. Uh, and we get some really neat stuff from this. We know that the center of the circle Again, why don't you go ahead and pause the video, uh, and you're going to write where you think the center is, and then in a minute I'll write. Okay, hopefully you did it, and uh, let's see here. I believe the center of the circle is at negative 3, comma, 4. Negative 3, remember it's the opposite of both of those. And uh, then the radius, um, r squared is equal to 20, so we square root both sides. And when we do, we get that r is equal to the square root of 20. And we'll make it into a simplified radical, although that doesn't help us too much. Um, that'll be, I believe, 2 root 5. So there's our radius and there's our center for this circle. So that's essentially how we do it. Um, we take this guy and we complete the square twice, and then we get the the center radius form for circles. 
hopefully you think that's pretty cool.